Chavez with NYC TV and joining me today is Mike Applebaum, a partner at Pennant Park. This is the sixth episode in our video series on private credit investing. Good morning and thank you for joining me, Mike. Thank you, Trinity. Absolutely. Let's start by talking about covenants. Exactly what are they and why are they important? Sure. So covenants are conditions written into a loan agreement to help protect a lender from undue risk. There are different types of covenants, but today we'll focus on financial covenants, which measure the financial performance of a borrower. Financial covenants can include maintenance covenants and incurrence covenants. Maintenance covenants are tested on an ongoing basis to make sure that the company is complying with certain metrics, such as an interest coverage ratio or a leverage ratio. Incurrence tests are uh, tested when the company takes various corporate actions, such as incurring debt to make an acquisition or paying out dividends to shareholders. Covenants are important if a company defaults on its covenant, it is a form of default and that gives us an opportunity to have an early conversation to kind of figure out why a company's performance might be struggling and how to help get them back on track. Now from your view, how often would you say that these financial covenants come into play at Pennant Park? So in a normal market environment, companies do not very often breach their financial covenants. And even when they do, it isn't necessarily a huge problem. But what it does allow is for us to intervene early to figure out why the company's performance is struggling and help get them back on track. We'll have conversations with the company's financial sponsor as well as the management teams to come up with a plan to help get them back in compliance with their covenants. And it can either be a short-term fix, such as a, a short-term waiver of a covenant, or a longer-term fix to give them more breathing room and more uh, cushion to get them back in compliance with their covenants. In exchange for this, sometimes we'll earn an amendment fee for our concession. Are there any additional protections you include when it comes to structuring an investment? Sure. In our deals, we typically like to lead them so that we can help influence the terms and pricing. So other protections we'd like to include include monthly financials mm -hmm. and board observer rights. And monthly financials allow us to have real-time constant information into the underlying performance of the company so we understand how it's doing, where it's headed. And then in an aggregate across our entire portfolio, it gives us some really good insights into the state of the American economy and the different industries that we lend to. Board observer rights give us the ability to see how the company's thinking strategically at the board level and what its future plans are. And then another topic is uh, EBITDA adjustments. EBITDA adjustments are typically one-time items meant that have the impact of inflating earnings. Examples are synergies that the company expects to get from an acquisition or credit today for future cost-cutting initiatives that they plan to have. Mm -hmm. Now, we accept from time to time EBITDA adjustments, but like many things, they're best used in moderation. We want to make sure that the core underlying earnings of the business is strong and strong enough to support the debt that we're giving the company and ultimately make good on their interest payments as well as repay the loan. Some very important points right there. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining me today. Thank you, Trinity.